Hi everybody, welcome back to another video on Feynman integration. Um, today we're going to be developing a, um, an integral representation for the double factorials. Uh, the double factorials are kind of like the, uh, the regular factorial, which is, you know, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, so on and so on. Um, the double factorials are actually two separate functions, and it, it's important to realize that. Um, there is the even double factorial, which is 8 times 6 times 4 times 2, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the odd double factorial, which is like 9 times 7 times 5 times 3. And they're different. Um, as far as I know, there's not like a unified uh, function for both of those. Um, they are two separate functions. Um, but anyway, let's get right into it. Um, uh, the, first, the first part of... Um, the demonstration just involves recalling that, um, you know, the Gaussian integral, that the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx is equal to the square root of pi all over 2. Um, and then in our next step, uh, step number 2, we just, we want to uh, create a function of t uh, that closely resembles our original uh, integral. Um, and in this case, we're just going to put a t right in front of that x and square the whole thing. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative tx squared dx. Um, and then we make, uh, to, to evaluate that integral, um, Bonnie, you could probably do it in your head, um, but I have room on the board to do it, so I'm going to actually um, show how I got it. Uh, you just make the substitution u is equal to tx, du is equal to t dx, and then you can arrive at this. Um, this is equal to this, and when you evaluate it, you get this. So in other words, this is equal to this, which is written right there. And now we come to the Feynman integration part of the video, which is simply taking a derivative with respect to t on both sides of that equal sign. So what we get when we take the derivative with respect to t of that, you know, give me one second here. Maybe that'll be better. Less shadows. No, that's not that much better. We'll keep it like that. Um, but anyway, yeah, when you take a derivative with respect to t of the left-hand side, you get um, back e to the negative tx squared times the derivative of negative tx squared with respect to t, which is just this. You see you have the negative 2tx times x, and then, of course, dx. And that's equal to the derivative with respect to t of this part right here, which is this. Then you just simplify it a little bit, um, and you arrive at uh, the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared e to the negative tx, all squared dx is equal to the square root of pi, over 4, times t to the negative 3. And I hope you can see how all that simplification works. Um, but anyway, I'm going to skip, um, basically, uh, to arrive here, all you do is continue to take derivatives with respect to t on both sides of that equation right there. And, um, if you know what double factorials are, um, you know, after, after about five or six iterations of that, you know, if you're smart, maybe you get it, like, right off the bat. Um, but what the pattern is, the pattern is this. That uh, for any value n, any integer value n, you'll have that the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the 2n times e to the negative tx squared dx is equal to quantity 2n minus 1 double factorial times the square root of pi over 2 to the n plus 1 times t to the negative quantity 2n plus 1. Um, so, yeah, that's what, if you just keep taking derivatives on both sides, this is the pattern that will emerge. So, um, now, uh, all we do in the, in the next step right here, sorry, I forgot to label these steps, 
um, but they're in order as you go down. Um, and, um, all I did for this next step is basically plugged in one for T. Um, so this goes away, that T goes away, um, and you're just left with this. The integral from zero to infinity of x to the 2n e to the negative x squared dx is equal to quantity 2n minus 1 double factorial times the square root of pi over 2 to the n plus 1. And then in our next step uh, to arrive at the uh, integral equation for the odd double factorials, um, we just solve for this. 2n minus 1 double factorial. And I left it as 2n minus 1 double factorial. You could, you could, uh, you could manipulate that so that you have n double factorial, but you would have to specify that n needs to be odd. Um, so I left it like this, because n, if n is an integer, this number right here will be odd. So you never... You don't have to worry about it. So that's 2n minus 1 double factorial. There's an integral representation for it. Um, I believe in a previous video, I already demonstrated this right here, that n factorial is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n e to the negative x dx. And that's more well known um, if any of you have studied the gamma function that's very similar to that. Um, but anyway, arriving at the, uh, the even double factorials is, is much easier um, because you'll notice that the even double factorial can be written just like this. Um, it can be written as 2 to the n times n factorial. And just think about that for a moment. n factorial is, we'll say, 2 times 3 times 4. Um, so that would be the n equals 3 case. No, I'm sorry, 4 case. So um, you can see that um, basically the, um, the, double fa the even double factorial is simply equal to the, um, I'm sorry, the, the, inter the uh, 2n double factorial is si simply equal to n factorial with each of the terms doubled, and that's where the 2 to the n comes in. So let's just plug in a couple things in our head right here. Let's, let's take, uh, say we want to find uh, 8 double factorial. Well, 8 double factorial um, is 8 times 6 times 4 times 2. Um, so we would need to plug in uh, n equals 4. So if we did that, we would arrive at 8 double factorial, which we, I said is 8 times 6 times 4 times 2. Plugging in uh, 4 for this n factorial, we get 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Don't forget the times 1. Um, it's normally not important, but in this case it is. Now, that 2 to the n is basically just a doubling of every one of those terms. So we would arrive at... 4 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 1 times 2, which would give you 8 times 6 times 4 times 2. So that's why that is true. I'm sure none of you needed that explanation, but I just wanted to talk. So um, anyway, yeah, so... Now, so we have this, we have uh, just a, a nice representation for 2n double factorial uh, in terms of the factorial, for which we already know an integral representation. So now we can just plug in this for that to arrive at 2n double factorial is equal to 2 to the n times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n, e to the negative x, dx. And uh, that's it. Um, this one was kind of easy to derive. Um... I was th this was this was the only way I was able to um, derive a, a a direct integral representation for the odd double factorial. Um, obviously, you could do it by you know getting the um, this like in the denominator because. Um, like putting this somewhere in the denominator of your 2n minus 1 double factorial. 
because you'll you'll notice that um, the the uh, like n minus one double factorial is equal to uh, n factorial. Hmm, let's see, what is it? So if you take n factorial um, and divide it by one of the double factorials, you will arrive at one of the odd double factorials, if, if that makes sense. Um, so for instance, if you had 8 factorial and divided it by 7 double factorial, you would arrive at 8 double factorial. So we could have arrived at an integral representation for the odd double factorials, but we would have had an integral in the denominator, and that's no good. So I believe this is the best form for the odd double factorials, and this is the best form for the even ones. And uh, anyway, that's my video, and I hope you enjoyed that.